I have always believed from teaching and from practi practicing the great craft that uh, you carry the image f in a flat sense in your short-term visual memory. So uh, I think when you look at the old, you know, the old images of great you know, practitioners and schools from this country, uh, you see that everybody had put the paper or the canvas vertically. So it's perpendicular to their, uh, their line of sight, which I believe functions like a laser beam coming out of your eyes. So what I don't think works for me very well is if I lean the paper back in one way or another. In fact, if I were to put the paper and the drawing board on a flat table, it would be amazing how much the image of the model stretches out because I'm carrying this in my short-term visual memory. And for me, proportional drawing is here, but it gets stretched out as it gets laid down on the paper. So I strongly advise uh, that you pay some attention to the way that your paper is arranged. Uh, I asked for Marissa to join us today because she's the best short pose model at the Art Students League, bar none. And she has this quality where she doesn't feel like uh, she's contriving the pose. When she stands, there's a dynamism, and it makes certain that this thing that we're talking about today is a very important aspect of drawing the figure. Uh, also, when you're looking at the model, do, do they do a dynamic pose which is also quite varied from the one they had just done? So a person uh, who's posing for you uh, is like a dancer. They're an artist, and they have a repertoire of poses, and so you're really searching for that. And these should help you in setting up um, a good situation in short pose drawing. We get a lot of questions in the life room about, you know, how do I, how do I uh, deal with very slight changes in the pose? How do I deal with that? How can I develop the drawing and not be thrown off? Well, part of it is using such a notion as a placeholder mark. Can you commit to it and not completely commit to it? Can you put down your best guess, your best idea, uh, knowing full well that you're going to move things around and restate them? So that's what I'm trying to do here. I've got a sense of her pose. Maybe not the right sense, but at least I've got a simple framework for her design, her expression, her life. So I, I reposition these different elements, moving them around, making space, shrinking. When I advise one of my students to draw first and measure second, I'm driven by this notion of, uh, of drawing, enjoying the drawing process, but even more importantly, uh, you need to have something to measure. If you have a drawing which has been be started, let's say, with head lengths. This is a measuring system, in my view, which comes in front of the drawing. This really isn't drawing right here. This is, this is a measuring system. And I find that terribly disruptive uh, on the gesture, on acquiring a really vital gesture and working with the gesture. So this is measuring first, drawing second. And I'm advising drawing first and then measuring second. When you draw first, I think that each person in my room uh, who draws first and measures second measures just a little bit less every time. Now, when I squint my eyes, which is another really important air aspect to, to doing this that needs to be said, squinting, it's like the plumb line, so fundamental but so necessary. When I squint my eyes, I can see much more clearly what's going on with this shape. I maintain a... Uh, an even pressure on the pencil so that it doesn't wear out the page. I barely press down on it, in fact. My purpose here is not to shade. It's simply to separate area from area. By using shape, I can get that separation. In fact, I think you'll find that by using shape, you start to actually think differently. You see differently because shape is really a, um, a different animal when it comes to drawing than line would be.